In order to understand the Beat Thing hardware, you really have to understand the individual sections. So I'm gonna just go over it right quick and I'm gonna tell you where everything is and I'm gonna talk a little bit about every section. Uh, first of all, there's the mode section. And you'll notice the mode section right here is the uh, top left hand corner. And you'll see all your modes can be quickly accessed, all but one. Um, your song, your pattern, your kit, your instrument mode can all be accessed from here. Um, right next to it and right in the middle of the machine is this big conspicuous window. Uh, this is the audition edit window. And at the bottom of the audition edit window, you'll see uh, basically four little keys called soft keys. Every time you change and go into a different mode, you'll notice that the soft keys will change. Basically what you see above the soft keys tells you what that soft keys function is in that mode. So pay attention to that because it will always be doing different things depending on what you're actually doing. In the upper right hand corner, uh, you'll see five effects. Basically this is the effects mode. Uh, you got a freak effect, delay effect, verb effect, bang effect, and blang effect. Just a, as a quick overview, um, freak is your crazy effects. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have um, distortion and wah and modulation, um, flange, chop and screw, that kind of stuff. Everything freaky is gonna be a freak effect, hence the name freak effects. Uh, delay is just a basically, uh, delay is just a basic tap delay. You know what I'm saying? It's a spatial delay. Verb is a reverb. Uh, bang is compression and limiting. And uh, blang is actually a visual effect. So you hit the blang button and you get full illumination. Hit it again. You get no illumination. Hit it again. You get just the grill and whatever button is selected. Hit it again. You get medium illumination. Uh, this is basically to help you save your battery life. If you want it to be brighter, then of course, you know, you can use all the power you want when you got it plugged up to the wall. But if uh, you're gonna hit the street, then uh, you might wanna watch your illumination. Of course, the less illumination you use, the more battery life you're gonna get out of it. So these big pentagonal pads down at the bottom of the machine are basically your interface to making sound on the machine. So, um, Whenever you're gonna bang out a beat, whenever you're gonna play something, of course you're gonna play it on the pads. And in order to access the full eight octave range of the pads, you're gonna basically bank up or bank down by hitting the bank up, bank down keys right here. If you look at the middle of the machine, uh, a little bit over to the left, just above the pads, you'll see six little keys that basically are your transport section. Um, these are basic symbols that you should recognize. This is a return to zero, takes you all the way back to the top. This is uh, to go back one bar. This one will take you forward one bar. There's your record, there's your stop, and there's your play button. This is how you play your patterns. Play, stop, and record with your patterns and basically move around the song and move around your patterns. Look in the middle of the machine and you're gonna see uh, nine buttons that basically allow you to access your tracks. Now your track is basically how you're gonna layer music. So if you hit the one button, that's gonna take you to track one. If you hit the two button, that's gonna take you to track two, so on and so forth. Um, you actually have 16 tracks on the device. So if you wanna access nine through 16, then you hit the nine through 16 button. Now one becomes nine, two becomes 10, so on and so forth and all the way out to the 16th track. Your tracks are basically where you're gonna put your kits and instruments so that you can overdub and layer those kits, those performances of those kits, those performances of those instruments. You're gonna layer those and create your pattern. So if you look over to the right of the machine, um, just by the modulation wheel, then you're gonna see uh, a little button that uh, says mixer. And right next to that is gonna be a mute and a solo button. The mixer section is really pretty unique because this allows you to mix the overall levels of the kits and the instruments that you have assigned to each track. So in that way you can quickly bring down an instrument level or quickly bring up an instrument level, just overall level of that, that track in and of itself. And you can also do sins of that overall level to your effects. 
If you look on either side of the machine, then you're gonna see two wheels. Uh, the one on the left is the pitch wheel. The one on the right is the mod wheel. The pitch wheel controls the change in pitch in real time. The mod wheel controls the change in modulation in real time. So if you grab the pitch wheel, then you're gonna be able to change the pitch of any one of those tracks as you play down and you can also record that pitch and play back that pitch. Same thing with the modulation wheel. There are different envelopes that you're gonna be able to control with this modulation wheel and you'll be able to record those modulation moves in real time as you sweep that frequency. In the middle of the machine, you're gonna see a bunch of keys. Uh, these are basically your function keys. And what these represent is the functions that you're probably gonna use the most uh, as you navigate through creating songs, creating kits, you know, stringing together your patterns. Um, these are very commonly used things. So we dedicated keys to them. Um, starting from left to right, just going across this line, you'll see that the first one is the edit key. Anytime that you want to edit anything that you're looking at, whether it's a pattern or a kit or a song or an effect, you're gonna hit the edit key and it'll give you, get you into the edit mode. If you look at the soft keys when you're in audition mode, you usually see a little edit above the soft key as well. So moving along, um, the next key is gonna be your save key. Whenever you wanna save something, save a pattern, save a kit, whatever it is you wanna save, the save is just a quick way to get in and, and save everything. And of course, you know, Beat Thing is a computer, and like with any other computer, uh, you have to remember to save often. So that's a good key to get familiar with and uh, to spend some time with. Next key is gonna be your exit key. Anytime you're in an edit mode or uh, in some kind of mode that you don't wanna be in, then a quick way to back up is to just hit that exit key. If you jumped into, uh, say, pattern mode, and then you went into pattern edit, and you wanna just back up, just hit the exit key. That's back, that backs you up right up out of that mode. Undo is basically like um, any other undo that you would see on any other application. It gives you one level of undo. So if you're recording and you take a pass and you wanna just undo the last thing you did, just hit the undo key. It'll uh, back you up one level and you can start all over and try to get it right. Next function is the insert copy key. Whenever you wanna insert or copy something, you hit that and follow the dialog. It walks you through the insert copy process. Next key is the delete key. Whenever you wanna delete a sample or delete a kit or delete a track, basically get rid of something, then you hit the delete key and you'll be prompted whether you wanna delete or not and you just tell it yes or no. Sometimes you may hit it by mistake. Don't worry, it's gonna ask you, are you sure you really wanna do this? You can say yes or no uh, by hitting one of the soft keys. Next function is gonna be the export function. So if you hit the export key, that's gonna take you to the export screen. You got two ways to export. Basically, you can export a live mix so you can change and mix things in real time. Um, live on is gonna be the default. Or you can uh, export straight to file. You do that by just selecting live and turning live off. When you turn live off, then it just goes right to the file and um, you can solo or mute files to get different takes to isolate different tracks or different elements that you want on their own track and they're all sample accurate and they're all gonna be lined up. You just pull them over into your DAW and boom, there they are. Next function is a system function. If you wanna access this function, you just hit the system key. And the cool thing about the system function is it doesn't pull you out of other functions. So system is where you're gonna find things like your buffer size, your pad sensitivity, um, your MIDI status, MIDI messages, uh, where your MIDI root note needs to change, basically all kinds of global system things. There's a USB mode and there's also some about information in the system side. This is basically where you wanna go to perform your general functions. Next function is your volume function. So you access that by hitting your volume button. Um, this is another function that doesn't pull you out of the last function. You just basically do what you need to do and you either hit the exit soft key or the exit button. You come back out of it and you're in your last function. 
Um, so volumes, basically you got a lot of independent volumes that you can control in the beat thing. Um, you can control your main output volume here. Uh, you can control your headphone volume. Of course, there's two headphones, so you got separate control of each headphone in uh, the volume screen. And you've also got uh, a line level input volume that you can control from this screen. So just use your cursor uh, to cursor up and down and uh, use your data to change the value of each one of these volumes.